Hello, my name is Zach Kerstetter. I'm an Ableton Live instructor here at Pyramind. And today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about using the vocoder to process your vocals in Ableton Live. So the vocoder is a really interesting device because it allows you to take the volume of one sound and the frequencies of another sound and combine them together into one sound. And this is often used to create kind of robotic sounding vocals, but you can use it on all kinds of different sounds and get really creative with it. So to start off, what we have in this session so far is I have some vocals that are recorded of a friend of mine. We must part, we must go under. And then I have this other track here that has an operator synthesizer just playing a couple notes. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and mute the operator because we're not going to be listening to this directly right quite yet. And what I'm going to do is go to my vocals track and grab a vocoder and drag it onto that track. Now the vocoder can be a little intimidating because the, the interface has a lot of stuff going on in it, but once you get used to it, it's really not that complicated. So the way the vocoder works, like I mentioned, is you get, there's two parts. You have the one sound, which is going to control the volume, which is called the modulator, and the other part of the sound that's going to control the frequencies, which is called the carrier. And the vocoder goes on the modulator track. So I'm going to put it on my vocals track because we're going to use the vocals to trigger the volume. Now, the way it works over here on the left side of your vocoder is you can choose your carrier. And the default setting is a noise generator, which can be a little bit harsh for probably for what you're looking for. So if I just turn on the vocoder, just the default setting on top of my vocals, it's gonna sound like this. Which sounds kind of like a demon is singing my vocals now, which might not be what I'm looking for. It might be depending on what mood I'm in. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using a noise generator as my carrier, which is gonna be adjusting my frequencies, I'm going to go down to this list to external. And external means I can grab an audio input from any other track in my session. There's only one other track in my session, so I'm just going to go to operator and grab that one. And because I'm grabbing it post effects, it's pre-mixer, so it doesn't matter if my mixer on this track is turned on or off. I don't really want to listen to it right now, so I'm just keep it turned off. And now if I play my vocals, you'll see that my audio from my vocals is triggering all these bands within our filter bank here. But nothing is happening because there's nothing coming from my carrier quite yet. So I've got to launch the clip on my operator track and then we'll see how it sounds. So now you can hear the vocoder is being triggered by the volume from my vocals, and we're getting the sound of the operator and mixing the two together, so it sounds like it's a synthesizer is singing. Now from here, we can start adjusting different parameters to tweak it and modulate it and get it a bit more sounding the way we want it to. The first thing I recommend checking out is this enhance button on your carrier. This is going to normalize the spectrum and volume of your carrier. Uh, which will give it a nice, brighter, smoother sound. We must go. We must go under. I tend to like to have this option turned on. The other really important control I found is this format knob here. And what this is going to do is it's going to start moving filters around and it's going to start emphasizing different frequencies, which will get you different vowel sounds. So as you turn up, it's going to emphasize more higher frequencies, and as you turn it down, it's going to emphasize more lower frequencies. We must You can get a huge range out of sense just out of this one control right here. Um, this is going to be really important. 
And in this middle section, as you notice, you're going to see different orange bars popping up. Those are going to be different bands of frequencies. So your low frequencies are going to be on the left, your mids are going to be in the middle, and your higher frequencies are going to be on the right. You can choose how many bands there are. By default, it's at 20, but you can go up to 40 different bands. We must fly. Or down to four different bands, so you can adjust the resolution of your bands. And obviously, the more bands you have, you're going to get a more accurate, smoother sound. And less bands, it's going to be a bit more kind of jumpy and harsh. As you go up in bands, you're going to be increasing your CPU load quite a bit. Um, then we have the range for our bands from 80 hertz to 12,000 hertz is the default, but you can adjust the range here. So we must fall. We must go under. So you can just the range here so you can get different frequencies within your filter bank. And then another thing you can do is you can use this pencil tool to turn the volume up or down on different frequencies. We must uh, there's some other important controls here. The gate is going to control the minimum volume that's going to be sent through your vocoder. So as you turn this up, your lower volume sounds aren't going to get through. We must so as you turn it up, you're going to be losing your lower volume bands and only your higher volume bands will get through. And we have a volume control here for what's going through our vocoder. And also we have a dry wet control so you can go back and forth in between your dry signal of your unprocessed voice and your wet signal of your actual vocoder. We must part. We must go under. Asking why. And there's a few more settings here and there and here, but those are the main really important ones. Um, just be sure as you're using this to one, put on the track that you want the volume from, usually things that have really clear transients like vocals or drums or something like that. And then from your carrier, if you're going for an external source, try different synthesizers, try different sounds, see how you can mix and match them and come up with really interesting combinations. And be sure to play around with your format control as well to get the right kind of sound out of it. It's kind of a strange, unique effect and it's really cool and a lot of fun to play around with. So I hope you get the chance to mess around with it and make some cool sounds. And I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool. And until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.